Hello everyone, welcome to Canvas Training. Ms. Boone asked me to show what a finalized course could look like. So I decided to show you how I organized my course. The I can statements are, I can explain how a completed course is organized. I can utilize some advanced features of Canvas to make the user experience more interactive. I can use the WYSIWYG toolbar to format documents. And I can utilize other tools to improve my course such as PowerPoint, and at the end, I'll show you how to use PowerPoint to make some pictures for your site. The slide is set up to show you how I use energizers in my room, and those are just questions that I ask so that the students can kind of think about those throughout the class. What could a completed course in Canvas look like? And how do I add some of the fancy stuff that other people have into my classroom? With that said, let's get into Canvas. Now that we're back into Canvas, the first thing I'll show you is how I have my students set up their dashboard. And the first thing you'll notice if you clip the ellipsis, the three dots, the snowman, most students will have list view turned on. And the problem with list view is it's just going to list the assignments that the students have to turn in. So I make sure the students have card view turned on. Another feature I have the students turn off is the color overlay. I have no idea why that's a feature. So I have the students turn it off and now you can enjoy all of the cards the way they're supposed to look. You can move the cards around, you can set the cards button, colors if you would like to set the color. You'll notice I have most of mine set and if you look at the master classes I have them set to this really awful green color so that um, I know that those are not the classes that kids should be in. So that is a quick introduction of the dashboard. Now we're gonna jump into the shared class that I shared with Ms. Boone. Um, it's most of my class in a nutshell. So from there what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the cover page. Uh, Southport High School asked us to have a cover page that looked like theirs. I readapted my cover page to have some of the same stuff in it, but again, I teach computer classes so my students know a little bit more about technology than other students, but I kept their button at the top. As you roll down, I added what I do is. I added buttons that take you to each of the modules themselves. I added, um, I kept their table, but I removed things I don't think the kids need to get to quickly. Google Drive and Meet are obviously easy. We use, uh, we are an Amazon education school, so the kids can apply for all those scholarships and things. So we have a link to Adhesive, which is their exterior site. Um, the I Do curriculum site, again, modules and grades are just modules and grades, and I added a little footer here. Don't worry about how I added some of this stuff. It's a little more advanced, um, but the end game is you can kind of make this table your own if you'd like to. Um, adding some more pictures and things to the top. That is the example here. You'll notice on the left hand side I have many of these items turned off. I don't want the kids to go straight to assignments or straight to quizzes. I don't like that feature because if the kids go straight to the assignments they miss content that's around the assignment. So I drive the kids to the modules button so everything is done in modules. Uh, to demonstrate the buttons here, the first days of school takes me to the first days of school. Um, you'll notice it takes a second to load and then the page clicks over and says, here's the first day of school assignment. Before I do that, I wanna show you the resources. I always show the kids the resources. I keep a series of resources that are really important to the foundation of the class. I have the two state standard um, things that I always need for professional development. I just have them there in case I need them. They're turned off because the kids don't care. Um, the classroom expectations are here. It's just a PDF file. Um, I can open it in a new window and show you that it's just a PDF file. Um, I tell the kids they have to take flight in my classroom because that's what good cards do. You'll see that it looks, uh, you know, just like uh, any other PDF file. I have late work policies so the kids understand, look, people are counting on you. Um, here's kind of how we pull our late work scores other people are counting on you to turn in your work just like in the real world so we need to make sure you are following that protocol 
I have things like what is your grade mead? Anthony Stanich and I decided to um, explain to the students what does a grade mean? What does an A actually mean? So that the kids kind of get some grasp as to what they're trying to accomplish here. I don't understand the subject matter. That's your F. So those are some basic things that I have set up there. I can show you how we colored the tables. Um, I'll go back to what does your grade mean and show you that if I click edit, you'll notice that I have different colors in each row of the table. Um, tables are kind of outdated code, but it makes it easier for non-tech people to understand it. So if I go in and I add a new table, um, we'll just go yeah, like that. Now I've got a table in here. I can insert my data if I want to insert my data. I can go up to table and properties and I can do things like I can make the border really big um, I can make everything line to the center I can give the border color so if I want to make the border um, I don't know let's go red let's go purple because that'll be really obnoxious and if I, I can make the whole thing one background I can add different types of border outlines if I wanted to and so now my border looks very elementary school. Um, I can then go in here and I, if I want to make this whole row a different color, I can go to row properties and I can give it a color and you can use any color that's a web color. So I don't know what goes with purple colors are my thing. So we'll go yellow we'll go, and we'll hit save and now that row is colored so you can see how you can kind of make the tables look a little more fancy than just um, you know text on a screen because that can get bored boring even for adults so that's how we created that I'm gonna hit cancel so I don't save it next thing we'll talk about is the layout that I created in the course itself um, we go through some of the items here in the resources some other things are software uh, kids if they have a computer at home our school gives them microsoft office for free so they can download office there i do use new OneNote for microsoft office uh, for notebook taking and things like that i encourage especially the robot kids i encourage them to keep track of their assignments in a one note so they can share it with me and i can make sure they're doing their things that they need to do to sur survive in high school Surveys, uh, IUPUI sends me surveys they want the students to take and I tell them to go to resources, go to your surveys and take the next survey. And for some of the code that we use, I have the kids use some of these different websites to edit their artwork if they want to make their own artwork. Um, again, if I go back to home, just to show you one more time, if I go back to my home page, um, I like to show that the kids win money and cash prizes when they win my class. So that's kind of why I have that picture on the front. I can go to first days of school. And in the first days of school, I try to eliminate the excuse of, I don't know how to turn it in. And if a student tells you, I don't know how to turn it in, that's, this is the great time to get that out of the way. So Mr. Knight asked us to do a good teaching survey. So I created a Google survey here, just a Google form, and they do that. Um, I have the students use Padlet to give me their information on what they think is informatics. Most people don't know what that is, so the students take time to Google it. Um, again, I ask them to do that, and then you'll notice at the bottom I have a rubric attached to all of the assignments. It just makes grading a little bit easier in Canvas to go ahead and create your rubrics inside. It's a little time consuming up front, but it pays off huge dividends at the end. As we go through, it's gonna close up the resources here. As we go through first days of school, you're gonna see that I have day one, day two, day three. Those are earmarked for me, not for anyone else. And so they're not published. Those should not be published. So the students don't know that it's broken down into days. And I'll show you what the students will look like here shortly. I have it set up so that students can look at this PDF. So what's a hitchhiker and a couch potato in my group? So I can open this. I want the students to read this PDF. They can download the PDF. Um, and it's just an essay about what do I do if someone is not doing their job in my group? And so I have the students read that assignment. 
the students can then go back and they take a little quiz over that assignment here one thing to make sure when you edit your quizzes you can put instruction in here you can make a video of yourself telling the students what to do and you can upload that you can actually record um, now you can record the the video right here in canvas the number one thing to remember though to that makes canvas kind of helpful to teachers versus other uh, the Google classroom and some of those others is this button called sync to sys and this button here as long as it's clicked when I sync my grades to canvas canvas it'll go into skyward and I don't have to do anything but hit a button so that's a very important button to click on all of your assignments and all of your documents that you want to grade in skyward um, from there you edit your questions and you can click this button show details I just have really simple questions because I want to prove that the kids actually read the assignment. From here we're going to go back into modules with everything aligned as a module here. The first days of school. Um, the other things that I have set up is for the students to turn in a discussion, a Google Doc submission, and then show them how I embed videos into the course. So the first Canvas discussion. This is a public place for your work environment where the principal and others can see your data. So make certain that you're being respectful to each other. I have the students understand that I try to create some kind of semblance uh, style to my class. So I added button and then a little header row, some, some images. I explain what the two parts are. And then it always is very, very helpful to be very specific about what they're going to turn in. So they have to click a reply, post an answer, and turn it in. I show them uh, what a rubric is, and then at the bottom they'll hit reply and they'll uh, subscribe to that discussion and they'll post an answer. Next is the Google Doc submission. This is just me making certain that they understand how do I turn in a Google Doc. Um, they go through, they have to uh, use complete sentences. I use the WYSIWYG to highlight things to make sure that the kids understand complete sentences are extremely important in this class because syntax is important and if English is important, English syntax is important. So again, writing complete sentences. Um, standard deliverable, again a Google Doc that's created that contains two or more GPAs so they know they have to upload a Google Doc. Again it's a file upload. And you'll see now here at the bottom, I have a rubric design. So when they upload it, I can grade based upon this rubric. If I click speed grader, I can click view rubric. And when I go to grade, I can actually just click and grade the rubric right here. And it gives, it the, it gives them the grade. So that's a really handy way to make sure things get graded quickly. And, and accurately when you're going from paper to, to online. The next thing I'll show you is the growth mindset assignment where I try to uh, embed growth mindset assignments throughout the curriculum uh, for the students. And again, I just embedded a YouTube video. What determines our intelligence? One thing I will point out though is at school, many YouTube um, sites are blocked from being embedded so I have the kids either watch it on YouTube I also add the link here just to make sure the kids can click on it and go there their basic instructions again I highlighted uh, complete sentences and very specific as to what they're going to turn in and then here's the rubric at the bottom um, again trying to create a similar uh, look to every assignment even though they're turning it in a little bit differently the um, last thing I'll show you in this in this lineup here is the tell me your name assignment and that assignment is to help me pronounce names properly but also to introduce each other to the class since groups are a big deal in this class the group setting is important and understanding how to say your group members name is really important as well so again I had a little picture here I have very important things for them to fill in if you are in you know red RB1 this is the button you click and it takes you to a presentation where you just add your slide to an existing presentation 
a again standard deliverable what they're turning in and finally the rubric at the bottom from there you'll notice I have another button at the top called resources and so what I did from here was I made a page and linked it to that assignment so the kids can see that this embedded Google slideshow is exactly what they should be turning in. And so they have a video, they tell me what they want, they've used a picture, so they've done multiple things in Google, but they also have now seen an exemplary slot. Again, the rubric at the bottom. I go back to modules. The home page is really just a landing page, so uh, to get them to where they want to get to quickly. The next thing I'll show you is I have these broken down by days because it aligns with my diary maps that I try to keep. But also you'll see that I have these teacher resources um, not published. So the students won't see them. But again, I have PowerPoints created to kind of help guide me through each day. Now, they're not exact. I have to update some things each time and um, tweak them a little bit. But this way, I don't lose documents. I know I have it. Um, again, it's just set up the same way. Before you go, the students have to know what they have to turn in. Um, the first day of school, this is exactly what we talk through. Um, and their seating chart, we talk about their perception of high school and how good it's going bad it's going to be. We talk about why we don't curse in class. We talk about everything, um, all of our helpers, computer science, and again, we go through all of the basic stuff. Um, and it's just a presentation that I can download. And since I do everything on my laptop, it's, this is a really good way to get things from my laptop to my desktop at school as well. Um, so that is basically how I set things up devised everything so that I have a unit of study and then my presentations that go with those I have prerequisites on the first day of school so that the kids can't tell me they don't know how to upload something because if they've passed the prerequisites they've done it um, they may not be experts but they've at least done it so this is basically how I set up um, the course so you can see how a course could be set up to help navigate, help kids navigate through. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is what does it look like from a student perspective. And so if I go to student view, this is what the kids will see um, when they come in. You'll notice they don't have all the other buttons. They have their modules, their syllabus, their grades, and their drive. That's really all they need to see because if they see anything else they're going to skip through stuff and not actually it's like a textbook they're going to skip through things they don't read just to get to the questions they have their buttons here just like i showed you in the beginning um, if i go to modules the kids only see the modules and the items that are published so anything that has a prerequisite they can't see yet so if i go to resources you're going to see that the two items i showed you earlier the kids can't see, but they can see all the information that's super important to the class. First days of school. And so, again, you'll notice resources. So they can't click on any of these things because they have to go through and click on every one of these buttons before they can do the first assignment. Um, again, I do that to say, well, you clicked on it. That means you read it. And that's what a, a digital contract is. So making sure students understand that when they say okay to an app, you know, you've given them permission to steal your data. You, you hit okay to that. Uh, making them think about their own apps and things. Again, you'll notice that the teacher stuff doesn't show up. You'll also notice um, intro to programming. There are no days listed here. So this is basically how things would look. Um, if I go in through the student portal, if I go down to something that doesn't have a prerequisite, you can see um, gross versus fixed mindset assignment this is what the students will see they'll see the information they'll see that there's a rubric attached to it and that they have to upload it the students will then click a button that says submit the assignment another thing I show the students is this add another file button it's a big deal 
kids always forget they go to Google Drive, they upload the first part of an assignment, but they'll forget to do the second part. So make sure that they know how to do that. Again, the rubric is there for them to grade once they hit it. Up here in the corner, it'll say assignment submitted. And if they submitted the wrong file, all they have to do is resubmit it. That concludes the basic items for Canvas. I did tell you I would show you how to use PowerPoint to make really cool buttons. I've got PowerPoint open and what I can do in PowerPoint is I'm gonna change the slide to blank and I wanna insert a shape. So I can pick any shape I want to make a button out of. I can change all of the you know different items to make it look something like that. I can even add text to it. So I wanna hit edit text and I wanna change this to, um, I can click on the text here. I can go up to text styles, something that doesn't look atrocious. I can make the font bigger. So I'm gonna right click on the outer edge and it has to be the outer edge. If you have an insertion point, a blinky line inside, it's gonna focus on the font, not the shape. And you wanna hit save as picture. And I can save this as an image. And I'm just gonna save it to my desktop so I can get to it quickly. And we're gonna call this module button. Underscore delete. Cause I don't really wanna keep it. And it'll save that as a button um, on my desktop that I can open with photos and now I can insert this as a picture into my syllabus into any of the code any of the assignments that that might help make some of your stuff a little prettier than just data dumping with all that said hopefully now you know how to use different items for canvas and you know how to make buttons with PowerPoint if you have any questions, please let me know and thank you for watching.